Hello and welcome to our Winning Wednesday Bible Study. I am Apostle Dr. Sakita Yancey, your Kingdom Instructor. Thank you for joining us again as we set our hearts and our mind to hear and receive from God regarding matters of the heart, overcoming bitterness. During this session, we will deal with overcoming bitterness. My prayer for you tonight is that the word, that this word from the Lord will be bind to your heart and mind and cause transformation, deliverance, healing, and forgiveness to take place, that you may know the will of God concerning your life in Jesus' name. I want to define two words tonight. So before I start defining and before we get into the session, please get your Bibles get your notepads, get your pens, and let's dig into the word of God. Our foundation scripture will come from the book of Hebrews chapter 12, and we will start at verse number 14, and we will work our way down. Amen. So the two words that I want to define tonight during our winning Wednesday Bible study is overcome. Overcome means to succeed in dealing with a problem or a difficulty, prevail over, bring under control, to deal with, or to conquer. Those are the things that we want to do as we learn to overcome bitterness. We want to succeed in dealing with it. We want to prevail over it. We want to bring it under control. We want to deal with it and then we want to conquer it so that we can be people who walks in freedom, who walks in love, who walks in forgiveness, who are healed, who are made whole and who are healthy. We want to be people who are healthy, that we may represent the kingdom of God, that it shall bring glory to God. And that is what this, this series of lessons will be about called the matters of the heart overcoming bitterness bitterness is defined is is defined as anger and disappointment at be as being treated unfairly and we all somewhere along our life have been treated unfairly and we've also treated people unfairly but when those things happen it if we don't deal with it it tends to set up what we call a root of bitterness or bitterness, which is the same thing, or resentment. But we want to deal with it. Why? Because it is a matter of the heart. And we are getting our hearts in line with the kingdom of God. And we are going to become people who are healed, who are healthy, who are whole, who are delivered, and who are set free. We will no longer walk around holding all these things in our heart and not living the quality of life that God has um, prepared for us to live because we have allowed things to stay or lie dormant in our hearts um, forever and not deal with them because we just don't want to face the fact. But I come to tell you tonight through this Winning Wednesday Bible study, and as I come to you on Winning Wednesdays, we've got, we're going to deal with the matters of the heart. And that means we got to deal with some heart, H-A-R-D issue, excuse me. We got to deal with some H-A-R-D issues so that we can deal with the heart, the H-E-A-R-T matters. Because guess what? Your heart matters to God. Your heart is your mind, your will, your emotion, your inner, your inner person, who you really are. That matters to God. And it dictates how you live your life. It dictates your fat, your behaviors and we want our life to line up with god amen so let's move forward during this session of the winning wednesday bible study we will be dealing with the matters of the heart overcoming bitterness what is the matters of the heart i'm glad you asked me the bible describes the heart as your inner man the spirit the soul the mind the emotions your passions your will etc the heart is the real you we want to get to dealing with the real you not not this out of service because, you know, um, man looks at the outward people. God looks at the heart. We want to deal with the part of us 
that God looks at and we want it to be pleasing in this side. We want our life to bring glory to God. This is what these sessions are about. Amen. The heart is the real you. Whether you're believe and whether you believe and whatever you believe, excuse me, affects your behavior. It is the control center of your life. If the heart, the spirit, the soul, and the mind, emotion, passion, the will, etc., is bitter, if it's resentful, if it's unforgiving, if it's depressed, if it's oppressed, if it's unhealed, etc., it will affect how you interact with with others as well as how you interact with your heavenly father. So this is why we're going to deal with overcoming bitterness in this session of the Winning Wednesday Bible study. And I want you to hear me with your heart. And I know there are times when we'll say, oh, well, I'm not bitter or there's nothing wrong with me and I'm okay. But some, we just have to look in because this is what I want to encourage you, encourage all of us, encourage the body of Christ. We want to make sure that there is nothing that will hinder us from receiving from God. And if it's our time to transition, we don't want anything to hinder our coming into the presence of God. Come on now, even on this side, just knowing who God is, loving God, having a life of freedom. Christ came that we might be free. And if we're harboring these things in our heart, and we don't love each other, we can't get along, or we don't like each other, or we have this um, alt against one another, we need to deal with those things. And I come to help us deal with those things. I'm the kingdom instructor, and we're going to learn to deal with these things so that our heart will be pure before God, so that what we do will glorify God, and it is not and, and, and we're not being controlled by our behavior or we're not being controlled by the things that have hurt us in the past and, and the things that we won't let go. I say tonight, let's get healed for real. Come on, somebody. Let's not continue to fake that we are healed and yet leave these types of sessions or the conferences or the church services and go back to being that same old bitter person that you were. I say tonight, let's get better instead of bitter. Amen. Let's become better instead of bitter. And that's why we're going to deal with overcoming bitterness, a matter of your heart. I want to give you a nugget. Listen at this. In order to change your heart, you need to understand what rules your heart. Now, that's good right there. If I want to change my heart, if I want to change what's in my mind, my will, my emotions, the passions, the things that drive me, the things that control me, I need to understand what rules my heart. If I'm harboring bitterness, and every time I get in the presence of someone or a situation that caused me to be bitter, and that thing makes me shift to be something other than what God created me to be, then I'm dealing with that with, with bitterness in my heart. And I need to understand is what I need to understand concerning that is that I have allowed bitterness to rule my heart. So my nugget to you tonight is in order to change your heart, you need to understand what rules your heart in order to change your heart you need to understand what rules your heart listen if these things rule your heart then they become an idol an idol is anything that rules your rules you other than god let me say that again if these things, the thing that we're dealing with tonight is bitterness, if it rules your heart, then, then that thing has become an idol. And an idol is anything that rules or controls you other than God. Whatever controls your heart will control your behavior. And no one can serve two masters. And we see, and we see that in Matthew chapter six, verse number 24. And it says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. 
You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and have bitterness and, and bitterness too. You're going to either hate God and love bitterness or love bitterness and, and hate God. Come on, somebody. We got to discover what's ruling our heart so that we can deal with the issue so that we can become free individuals to love, to walk in unity, to be at peace. I believe that it can happen. It, I'm not saying that we won't have issues and problems to come up, but don't allow these things to keep us from walking in unity as a body of Christ, as believers, as family members, as husbands and wives, as sons and, and mothers and sons and fathers and daughters and mothers, family as a whole, we need to stop allowing bitterness to control us and keep us separated or keep us apart from each other. Tonight, we're going to overcome this thing called bitterness so that we can be free, so that we can be free to love, we can free, be free to walk in unity, we can be free to fellowship, we can, we can look at people straight forward and have a conversation with them without having a side eye wondering what are they going to do it's going to cause us to come out of this place called suspicious and, and really know how to discern amen so um uh, i don't is anything or anything that rules your heart other than god whatever controls your heart will control your behavior we need to write that down and you need to think on those things you need to pause and think on those things and wonder what is controlling my heart what have I allowed to sit on the throne of my heart? God is the only person that's supposed to so, supposed to be the Lord of your life and the King of your and the King of your life, and He is the only one that's supposed to sit on the throne of your heart. And if anything other than that is sitting on, if anything other than God is sitting on your heart, guess what? That thing has become an idol. And God is a jealous God. He said, I have no other God before me. And you need to get rid of that idol. And bitterness has become an idol. And that is why we must deal with it. Amen. Because we don't want anything sitting on the throne of our heart but God and the things of God. Amen. It's time for us to just be real with ourselves. This is what our win, win Wednesday Bible study is about. We're going to win at this thing called life. We're going to win at this thing called unity. We're going to win at what we call love, learning how to love one another. I'm not far-fetched. I'm not out, way out there in love field. God said that we can love. Guess what? I believe that we can love. If God said that we can be uh, walk in unity, I believe that we can walk in unity. If God said to, to, to have peace with all men, guess what? I believe that we can have peace with all men when we deal with the H-A-R-D, the heart matters that are in between us. And then we can get our H-E-A-R-T right so that we can walk in unity. We can walk in love and we can walk in peace. Amen. Tonight, our foundation scripture will be found, will be coming from Hebrews chapter 12 and uh i say verses 15 but i want to start at verse number um 14 so i'm gonna read it from two translation hebrews chapter 12 verse number 14 says pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the lord uh, verse number 15 said looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of god Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. By what? The root of bitterness. Many become defiled. So I want to look at verse number 15 from the Passion Translation. Watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's grace. And make sure one live that make sure no one lives with a root of bitterness sprouting within them which will only cause trouble and poison the hearts of many bitterness is considered as a poison um the amplified of of hebrews 12 and 15 said see to it that no one falls short of god's grace and that no root of resentment bitterness is also resentment springs up and cause trouble 
and by it many be defiled. Again, our topic for this session is matters of the heart, overcoming bitterness. Bitterness is often the result of rejection or hurt. People become angry and bitter when they fall in, f fail to forgive and release people who have wounded and offended them. Everyone has experienced some sort of pain in life. Every one of us have. And many do not resolve it. And this is where we get to a place where we become bitter and resentment because we don't resolve the things that hurt us or wounded or offended us. But I say tonight, it's time to bring it under control. It's time, it's time to deal with it. It's time to conquer it. It's time to overcome it. It's time to allow God to set you free so that you may walk in freedom. Come on, somebody. Free to dominate those things which are trying to control you. Everyone has experienced some sort of pain. I've said that. And many do not resolve it and therefore end up becoming bitter. Bitterness is a deep-rooted spirit. It goes, it goes deep into a person's emotion and it's hard to dislodge. Because the person feels angry and other deep emotions that are real to them. And I'm not saying that it's not real. But we cannot continue to allow bitterness to control our lives. Amen. Or dictate how we interact with each other. And this will also dictate how we um, interact with God. Because sometimes we handle God the way we handle people. Because we may bring, brought God down to a man's standard instead of letting God have his own, God has his own standard. And we need to put God back in the God slot and know that we do not handle God like we handle people. Come on, somebody. We know we do. This, this spirit gets rooted down into the flesh and start reacting in anger and start, and we start revisiting the wound and the offenses that cause the bitterness which satisfies the flesh. This bitterness doesn't, doesn't do anything but satisfy the flesh. We got to get rid of that. We got to crucify that flesh. Come on, somebody. This is why the root of bitterness needs to be broken through fasting, which starves the flesh. Bitterness is very common and, multi and multitudes need deliverance from it. Multitude of people need deliverance from it. We may say that we're not bitter, or we may say that we doesn't harbor resentment, but I want you to check yourself and see what controls you when you get in, in the presence of people that you say you don't like or people don't like you. I still want to remind us we don't fight flesh and blood. This is a spirit. And this is a spiritual warfare. And these are the things that we're going to have to deal with in order to overcome this enemy that keeps trying to attack us, that keeps trying to separate us, that keeps this wedge between us from fellowship and walking in unity, whether it be in church, whether it be in our homes, whether it be on our jobs, whether, it, whether it's siblings, whatever it is, it keeps, it tries to keep us divided. And we're going to deal with overcoming bitterness so we can remove these wedges so we can begin to unify, have a unified front and know how to attack the enemy head on. Amen? Listen at this. Bitterness has the power to destroy us from within and can negatively impact those around us in many ways. So bitterness doesn't only destroy you, but it also impacts others that are around you. That is why we got to overcome this thing. Bitterness blows out the candle of joy and leaves the soul in darkness. What is the root of bitterness? Bitterness is also known in the Bible as a spiritual poison and a means by which many are defiled, according to Hebrews 12 and 15. It is the source of countless spiritual and physical problems in millions of lives today. The Bible tells us that many are defiled by the means of bitterness. Bitterness can be tricky to recognize because it's not a symptom or visible on the surface. See, bitterness is not a symptom, so you won't even, you won't even notice it. And it is not visible on the surface like anger. When you get anger, you express, you know. But bitterness is quiet. 
it's resentful. You you know, you know, you just resent people. You don't say anything, but you resent them. You have this, you have this uh about them or I don't deal with them or uh, you know, I'm all right and this type of stuff. We need to get rid of that stuff there, honey, and learn to love and, and just deal with what's in our hearts. Come on, somebody. It's time to deal with the heart of the matter. And we, in order to deal with the heart, H-E-A-R-D-H-E-A-R-T, we got to deal with the H-A-R-D, the heart matters, those things that are in between us that stops us from fellowshipping and walking in unity and love with one another. Come on, somebody. I'm going to preach it to Jesus Christ until we gather it, until we get it. We jump, we shout over all this stuff, but nobody deals with it. But I come tonight to deal with it. Until Jesus comes, we're going to deal with these things until the body of Christ become free and free indeed. Amen? Because there's no use in us keep jumping and shouting over all this stuff and we bitter and we resentful and we don't like each other and we um, looking at each other side eye and I don't want to be bothered and I don't like this one and this is how I grew up. Come on, that is not that. That's just stuff that we picked up. We ought to be loving people. We ought to walk in unity. How can we say that we are the body of Christ and we cannot even fellowship with one another? I wish someone would tell me. My God. Listen, bitterness can be tricky to recognize because it's not a symptom are visible on the surface like anger, like anger usually is. Bitterness is an underlying problem that doesn't always manifest on the outside, but it dwells in that person's system because it's poison. Come on, somebody. What is a root? A root is a source or a bubbling foundation that, that is laying under the surface, and bitterness lays under the surface. Roots do not directly manifest or make themselves known, but our but are a source of nutrition or fuel for other elements that are on the surface. So bitterness is just like a root. It, it's on the but it's on it's under the surface, but it fuels other behaviors. Come on, somebody. It fuels that side eye. It fuels that I don't want to be bothered with them. It fuels that I'm not going to the family together. It fuels that I'm I don't like, I don't want to be in the room with my husband or my wife. It fuels those things. Why are we so bitter to each other? What's wrong, people? Let's get right, church, and go home. Come on, somebody. What causes the root of bitterness? I'm glad you asked. The seed of bitterness often begins with hurt, real or perceived, inflicted on us by another person or circumstance. It may be intentional or unintentional. Hurts that breed bitterness can start at a very early age, especially when they are inflicted by family members, by church members, by people on the job, wherever it may be. It inflicts it. If we're inflicted, it brings on bitterness and it brings on resentment if we don't resolve the issues, if we don't deal with them, if we keep burying them under all this stuff and putting on the makeup and putting on the clothes and we all right, but yet we, there is something underlying. There is something, there's a current flowing under there that we need to deal with. There is an elephant in the room and it is called bitterness. And we need to deal with it, people of God. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, the soul of bitterness is a heart that harbors hostility and does not deal with hurt by the grace of God. When you become bitter, the bitterness takes root in the heart and it grows deeper. The fruit of bitterness, what does it affect? When we learn about the seed and the soul of bitterness, We've learned about the seed and the soil of bitterness. Now let us take a closer look at the root and the fruit of the bitterness, which is found in our text of Hebrews 12, verses 14 through 15. The root of bitterness is underground and it is easy to hide and camouflage. If something is camouflaged, you cannot see it. So it says, from my study, it says that Bitterness is underground like a root. It's underground. You can't see the root unless you dig it up. 
when you dig it up, then you begin to see the root and you'll begin to see the source and the thing that fuel or cause the tree to grow. You need to know what is in your heart that's controlling your actions and your behavior and why you move the way you move or why you interact with people the way you interact. Come on, somebody. It ain't always that I just like to be alone. Why? With me, no man is an island. We need each other. We need each other to help each other grow. We need each other to, to help to learn from each other. Listen, the root of bitterness is underground. It is easy to hide, excuse me, and camouflage. Seldom do you find anyone who will admit. Mm, seldom do you find anyone who will admit that they are a bitter person. Now, I often tell the people at the church, if I had not allowed God to deal with my heart during the time of some things that I was experiencing inside of church and with people, I could have become a bitter person. But I made a decision that I would not allow what people had done or what I perceived that they had done to make me become bitter or a poisoned person that I distrust everybody. And bitterness will make you distrust people. And in order for us to get along, I'm not saying that you got to let your guard down and I'm not saying that people won't hurt you, but it's how we perceive it and what we do with it. Do we take it? Do we go and, and talk to the people and say, what you did? It hurt me. It offended me. And let us come together and reason and work this thing out so that we both or that I don't become bitter or angry at you. And those are some of the things that I had to do. I had to deal with it because I could have become a bitter person. But I made a decision that I will not be bitter. I serve a, I serve a great God. And he can do anything. And it was the process of time that I was able to get through this thing and yet still see the people or, 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 or the group of people or the circumstance or the situation or whatever it is, and yet not harbor any hostility in my heart towards them. And I thank God for that. And I said that and I shared that because if God did it for me, he will do it for you if you will allow him and if you make a conscious decision that I will no longer allow bitterness to control my life i won't let it control my life i won't let what they did control me i won't let that situation on the job dictate how i interact with people come on we just need to check it i'm not saying that they don't hurt you or, and and i'm gonna say this too you hurt people too so we have to look at it on all sides. We have to evaluate and see what part I play, what part they play. But guess what? Someone has to be the bigger person in this situation so that we can come over. You need to check your own heart. Amen. Deal with what's in your heart. This is what these sessions are about. Deal with what's in your heart that you may walk up right before God and be pleasing to God in your walk. Listen, seldom do we find anyone who will admit that they are, bit, they are a bitter person. They will either deny it or disguise it. A bitter person is hypersensitive, ungrateful, insincere, holds grudges, and has mood swings. Bitterness will affect you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. That's why we have to deal with it. It affects every part of who we are. It alters who we are, just like rejection. Rejection comes to alter your DNA and make you someone other than who God created you to be as well as bitterness it comes to do the same thing it comes to change who you were created to be and that's what then that, that was by design and that's what the enemy wanted to do we don't give him no glory or credit and we're not giving him any praise but i just want to expose this thing and say that's what it was designed to do it affects you physically emotionally and spiritually because the fruit of bitterness is an asset that destroys its container. Woo. Bitterness destroys the container. It destroys you physically. It destroys you emotionally, 
it destroys you spiritually because the root of bitterness is an acid or poison that destroys its container. If anyone knows about acid, and, and I can get this from my husband, it has to be contained because if it's not put in a, a well-sealed container, it will eat through that container. Or it will, if it gets on your skin, it will burn your skin. Think about what bitterness does. Let's flip it and say, if I continue to hold, harbor bitterness in my heart, my mind, my will, my emotion, it will destroy the container. It will destroy me physically. It will destroy me emotionally. It will destroy my um, spiritual life. Hallelujah. It will destroy. This is why we come to deal with it so that it can stop destroying your life from the inside. Come on, somebody. It's destroying you on the inside because nine times out of ten, ten being the greatest, most of the time when we are, we walk in bitterness, we don't say anything about it. We hide it. It says we either disguise it, we cover it up, or we deny it. We do something, and it 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 just sits there, and it it causes the container to to be destroyed. It destroys relationships. It destroys families. It destroys unity. It destroys your love walk. Come on, it's it's cost you something to harbor bitterness in your heart. It's costing you valuable time, and you're wasting it harboring on things that you can ask God to forgive you and forgive the others. I know we talk about forgiveness, but it's important because how do you want God to forgive you? And you won't forgive others. Come on, somebody. Listen, bitterness has the power to destroy us from within and can negatively impact those around us in many ways. Sometimes hurt comes through failed relationships with others or setting the bar too high in our lives. This can even happen in our relationship with God. Instead of seeking and understanding his ways, Sometimes we get so focused on our own wants and desire that we feel hurt and believe we are being treated unfairly when God, when God doesn't give us those things that we want. When your heart is bitter, God will not be real to you or the things of God will not be real to you. Why? Because hatefulness and holiness does not dwell in the same heart. Hatefulness and holiness does not dwell in the same heart. And without holiness, you will not see the Lord according to the word of God in Hebrews 12 and 14. What the Bible says about bitterness. Bitterness is the opposite of God's way of thinking. It can take us away from God. Hebrews 12 and 15 says, See to it that no one fa uh, fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and cause trouble by it many become defiled. And that's the English Standard Version. Bitterness defiles because it is a sin that linger in our lives and separate us from God. What shall separate you from the love of God? Will you allow bitterness? to keep you separated from experience, the love of God, the true love of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. Will you allow bitterness to keep you from being in God's presence? Will you allow it from being in fellowship with your brothers and your sister, being spiritual or naturally? Will you allow it to keep you and your spouse separated and pretend that everything is all right in the public but yet behind closed doors? You don't get along. You're not. You're. You're so angry at each other. You can't stand each other. Come on, people of God. That's not the way God wants us to live. Let's deal with these things. Or you isolate yourself and you. Oh, I'm okay. You're not okay. You're over there. You're dealing with that thing of bitterness and you're resentful and you have hostility in your heart and you're angry at one person, but you take it out on everybody else. Come on, that's not God. And He wants us to deal. 
with the heart, each H E A R T matters, and the H A R D matter, that heart thing, that thing that caused the problem. Bitterness defiles because it is a sin that lingering in our lives that separates us from God. It removes holiness and peace of mind from our life. I told you bitterness destroys. It removes the holiness and the peace of mind that we could have. It removes it from our life. The Bible tells us to overcome bitterness. Let's Ephesians 4 verses um, 31 through 32 read. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. We got to learn to forgive. In order to overcome this thing called bitterness, we got to learn to forgive. We got to learn to forgive. We got to receive forgiveness. We got to give forgiveness. You got to have a forgiving heart. Why am I teaching this during this session? Because I want us to, to, to have a forgiving heart. Oh, Pastor, you want people to walk all over us. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to have a forgiving heart. Because offense is going to come. We live in a falling world. People error all the time, and so do you. And you want people to forgive you. You got to forgive others that you may be forgiven. Come on, people. We know the scripture. We know what the word of God says. But we just refuse to obey it. Because I want to cater to my flesh. I want, I like this. I, 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 you, you, thank you, Holy Ghost. You want to be um, judged in the jury. You want to, you want to judge it. You want to, you, then you want to sentence it. You want to do it all. But that's not your job. Vindication or revenge belongs to God. That's not our job. He told us to forgive. He told us to forgive. So I want you to ask God tonight, Lord, give me a forgiving heart. Let me re-examine this situation. And even if they don't come back and they don't apologize, God, I still forgive them so that I may live, so that I may move on. Because bitterness has some people just stuck. And tonight there are some that are watching. You are stuck. Because you are you're holding on to what happened and who did it and how they did it. You if it set up bitterness in your heart, you have hostility, hostility towards these people. You wonder why you interact with the people the way you interact, and you always say it's them. Well, really, it's you because you're holding the hostility in your heart, and they got you on a hook. And when they got you on a hook, when they come in your presence, they can swing you any way they want to because they have you on the hook because you won't let go of the what was done. Oh, Apostle, you just saying that and, it, and it's just not that easy. It's not easy because you keep saying it's not easy. Death, life and death is in the power of your tongue. It's what you say. It's how, what comes out of your mouth and what you believe about your situation. I made a decision in my heart. I said, God, I refuse to allow what was done, what was said, what I thought was done wrong, what I thought was said to cause me to be a bitter person. I refuse to. I will not allow situations and circumstances and, and things that the enemy uses people to do to make me uh, walk away from God or make me think less of God or make me think less of people. People are people. But I serve a mighty God that can heal, that can deliver, that can set free. And I choose to receive that and I choose to believe it. And I encourage your heart to do the same thing. Because I want to ask a question, what does it do for you to continue to hold on to the wounds, the offense, the things that happen? The things that happened years ago, the things, what does it, what does it profit you to just keep holding on to it? What does it profit you to keep holding on to bitterness? What is it profiting you? I will submit nothing. 
but it keeps you from having healthy relationships. It keeps you from having loving relationships. It keeps you from having peace of mind. It keeps you um, from walking in true holiness. Come on, somebody. It keeps you walking around with a mask on saying I'm okay. And yet I'm not okay. It keeps you isolated. And you think everybody's against you and, and, and they're not. Bitterness can alter our personalities. Studies have described the effects of bitterness on a person's well-being. It can affect our well-being. They all seem to agree on one profound fact. Bitterness left unchallenged can, alters a, can alter a person's personality over time. Bitterness can cause a person who was once outgoing to turn inwardly and selfish. Lead a person to distrust others more and more until everyone seems untrustworthy. I believe I've already said that. This can lead to depression and anxiety. Bitterness destroys relationships, including marriages, often, often because of, the, of its toxic nature. Talking about bitterness. It takes root in, a, in the other person as well. And compromise, and we compromise our faith and our belief in God's plan for our life. Bitterness can be highly destructive to you and the people around you and your relationship with your Heavenly Father. It often leads to sinful behaviors, especially when we let it um, stay in our hearts over time. If we just let it stay there and never deal with it, Keep the sky, keep denying that it's there. Oh, it's not there. That's not me. I'm not a bitter person. I'm not resentful. I don't know what they're talking about. That's not me. Well, if it's not you, what? So I applaud you. But there are many that are dealing with it. So I will, for those of you that it's not you, I want you to teach someone else how to overcome it. Amen. Because that's what this class, this is what this session is about overcoming this thing we're gonna overcome it how do i overcome it first i got to understand what it is that's why i'm telling you what it is so you'll be able to identify in your life if it's there and even if you're not fully in there there may still be some residue we want to get every bit of it away from us or off of us so that we can glorify god in our life i said earlier and i'm gonna say it again we got to stop shouting and dancing over all of this stuff and start dealing with it so that we can really and truly bring glory to God with our lives. Listen, confronting our own bitterness, sometimes we are the last to realize we are bitter. But overcoming bitterness begins with seeing the sign and recognize it in our own lives. That's why I was telling you what it was, so that you can recognize the signs in your own life, so that you can confront that thing in your own life, so that you may overcome it. Signs of bitterness include being unhappy, and this is not a um, this is this is this is not a, a list that we just a concrete list, but these are some things that I pulled together to show us some of the signs, and there are others, but for the sake of time, I pulled some together for us, amen? Some of the signs of bitterness include being unhappy and discontent with our lives and achievements, constantly distrusting people, not being able to acknowledge a friend's success or other, other people's accomplishments or achievement, jealousy, criticizing instead of complimenting when a person always just criticized never able to compliment people we better check ourselves we better check our heart every time someone do something you criticize every time someone say something or accomplish something you criticize check your heart to see if it's bitter to see if your container contains poison 
because it's poisoning your system and therefore you want to poison others. Am I helping us tonight? Listen, avoiding cheerful or happy people. Oh, I don't like to be around anybody that's cheerful or happy. Oh, I just don't like to be around people that are cheerful or happy. Check your heart. Listen, if we don't forgive and allow God to heal us everywhere we hurt, bitterness will become a form of idolatry that rules the heart in the place that should belong to God. Let me say that again. If we don't follow, if we don't forgive and allow God to heal us, Everywhere we hurt, everywhere we're disappointed, everywhere we've been broken, everywhere we've been wounded, everywhere we've been offended, bitterness will become a form of idolatry that rules the heart and the place that should belong to God. We must confess it as idolatry if we hope to uproot it. Amen. Steps to overcoming and up, uprooting bitterness. Because bitterness is a deep and contentual feeling, it takes time to find a way to defeat it. There is no instant cure, but there is an instant God mm, who is able to heal your heart completely if you allow him. There is no instant cure, but there is an instant God who is able to heal your heart completely if you allow him. Let go. Let God reveal it bitterness to you. Sometimes people say, I know my heart. There is no bitterness in me. Truth of the matter is you don't know your heart. God's words tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's Jeremiah 17 and 9. A deceitful heart. Listen, a deceitful heart cannot diagnose a deceitful heart. Oh, that's good right there. A deceitful heart cannot diagnose a deceitful heart. You and I need to let God and the Holy Spirit do a radical surgery on our hearts. Reevaluate yourself and the situation. This involves not only recognizing the impact of bitterness or the impact bitterness is having on your life, but also evalu evaluating whether your view of a person or the situation is even accurate or worth your attention, or are you looking at it through the eyes of bitterness, overcome bitterness. Let grace reveal it, bitterness. A response of bitterness is never right when someone has done something to you wrong. You need to ask God to forgive you and he will buy his grace. If someone has wronged you, cut it down and forget it by the grace of God and bury that hurt in the grave of God's unforget unforgetfulness and forgiveness. Bury that thing in God's un in God's forgetfulness and forgiveness. Justice is God giving us what we deserve and mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. Forgive is how we're going to overcome it. We're going to let God reveal it. We're going to evaluate ourselves in the situation. We're going to let grace reveal it. This is how we overcome it. We're going to forgive. In Matthew 18 and 22, Jesus said that we must forgive. He said 70 times 70. Listen, this isn't about math. It's about developing a forgiving heart. It can take a long journey of continual forgiveness to end bitterness and strife. But if you truly want to be delivered, healed, and set free from bitterness, then truly, truly forgive that you may live and enjoy life and freedom from this spirit of bondage. Let good replace it. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without, which no man will shall see the Lord. You and I cannot be holy unless you, we follow peace with men. It is so worth it when we forgive. But you say, look, that, look at what they've done. 
I am not going to let them off the hook. This is what we'll find sometimes we'll say. Well, they are not on the hook. You are. Why? Because what they have done continues to, to plague you. And you are constantly being moved by the situation or the circumstance. And that situation dictates your dictates your action. Then you are not free. And yes, you are the one on the hook. They are not. Why? Again, because they're able to move you whichever way they want to. They dictate your actions. They dictate how you move. They dictate your mood for the day. They, they get, it calls you to have mood swings. You all right. Then when they come in the room, you go from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. High. Come on. That's not God. Let's deal with it, people. But I say tonight, forgive. Be free from their hooks. They have the ability to swing you in any direction they please. I want someone to shout, it is over. And I will forgive in Jesus' name. Remember, when you forgive, you set two people free. And one of them is yourself. Number six. Do not go in it alone. When you are overcoming this thing of bitterness, don't go at it alone. Find you someone that is trustworthy, that you can trust, that you can depend, that you can talk to, to help them help you through the process. And the process will get you to the purpose. It will help you get to that place of healing and deliverance you got to learn to talk it out. So don't do it alone. Let me let me help you out. Isolation feeds bitterness. Let me say that again. Isolation feeds bitterness, which can only alter your personality, but also damage your health and your faith in God. Talk to someone again who's trustworthy a friend, someone you can trust, even your leader, your pastor, someone you can trust that will sit down and you can pour your heart out so that you can hear what's really in you. Because if you can hear what's in you, then you then will be apt to allow God to heal you. You'll open up. But the first thing I like to say when you um, sit down with them to be open, to be honest, and to be willing, to be open to the truth, to be honest with yourself, and to be willing to receive advice and to willing to be to be healed. Amen. Most importantly, pray. Prayer to overcome bitterness and prayer to forgive and pray to forgive. Pray to overcome bitterness and pray to forgive. I understand that it can take a moment when the hurt is deep. But I encourage each of you, or I encourage all of us to seek healing and deliverance for this or from this root of bitterness that you may be free to live. Listen, it is important to never lose our relationship and connection with God, no matter what. Bitterness is most certainly a dangerous emotion. If there is a root of bitterness, it needs to be cut off at the root and removed from one's soul. We need to make a choice to release all the hurt and ball up feelings inside our system and repent from holding that poison in our heart. God wants us to be aware of it and break free from its grasp. I say, turn those feelings and forsake them. Turn from those feelings and forsake them and allow, and allow the Lord to minister the and allow the love of the Lord to minister to you. Never now what I'm saying is to be healed, be delivered, and be set free. I brought this word to us tonight because there are things that we people are dealing with in the body of Christ, or these are subjects that people won't talk about, or sometimes people feel that they don't have anybody to talk to. But I wanted to bring it to us during our winning Wednesday night session so you will know that there are ways that you can overcome this. If this is you, find someone that you can talk to. Get counseling. Seek help. 
and stop isolating because that doesn't do anything but fuel the bitterness. It causes you to just overthink, rethink, think the problems over. Find someone that you can release and talk to. And I mean a trustworthy person. Someone that you can really talk to so that you can get to the matter of the heart. So that you can become free and that your life glorifies God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to let go all of bitterness and indignation and wrath, passion, rage, and bad temper and resentment, anger, and animosity. You are the one who binds up and heals the broken heart. We receive your anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage. We receive emotional healing by faith. We thank you for giving us the grace to stand firm until the process is complete. Thank you for the wise counselors. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit as our wonderful counselor. Thank you for helping us work out our salvation with fear and trembling. For it is you, Father, who works in us to will and to act according to your good pur purpose. In the name of Jesus, we choose to forgive those who have wronged us and we purpose to live a life of forgiveness because you have forgiven us. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice. We desire to be kind and compassionate to others, forgiving them just as just as in Christ just as Christ forgave us with the help of the holy spirit we make every effort to live in peace with all men and be holy for we know that without holiness no one will see the lord tonight father we purpose to see to it that we do not miss your grace that no bitter root grows up within us to cause trouble Father, we will watch and pray that we enter not into temptation or cause others to stumble. Thank you, Father, that you watch over your word to perform it and that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And we declare tonight that we have overcome resentment and bitterness by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Lord, heal, heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for allowing me to come into your home on this winning Wednesday Bible study. And I pray that something that was said on tonight concerning the matters of the heart, overcoming bitterness, has caused your life to be transformed, caused your heart to seek healing and forgiveness, caused you to reevaluate your situations, Cause you to look again at that situation and tell God to, to heal you everywhere you hurt. This is your time to allow God to heal you. So I say to you, be healed, be delivered, and be set free in Jesus' name. Remember to follow us every fourth Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And every Thursday night at 7 p.m. on Winning in Prayer TV Network on Roku, Facebook pages, Empower to Serve Ministries, and SB Yancey Ministry of Hope, Winning in Prayer TV. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channels, Apostle Sakitha Yancey and the Winning in Prayer. And I would like to close, as I always do, I would like to remind you that you are an amazing person. And you can do all things, even overcome bitterness within Christ or through Christ who gives you strength. Until we meet again, may the blessings of the Lord be your portion. May strength be your portion. May forgiveness be your portion. And remember, we are always winning in prayer. Be blessed. I love you. Until next time. Thank you.